Okay, so now we're going to look at linear combinations, which is on page 8. Okay, so it says, if you have, so the definition says, you have these n vectors belonging to a vector space, and you have some scalars associated with that vector space, we call the sum alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 plus, and so on, until you get to alpha n vn, a linear combination of these vectors. And then here is another way of writing the sum with sigma notation, which you don't actually need to know, because you can always use this. But this can be useful. You can even use a notation like this for infinite sums, actually. But this can be useful sometimes. So what? So a linear combination is when you take a bunch of vectors, v1 to vn, you multiply every single vector and a bunch of scalars, alpha 1 to alpha n, and you multiply every single vector by the scalar, by a scalar, by a different scalar, and then you add them all together. And now what you get will be a vector, right? Because when you multiply a vector by a scalar, you get another vector. That's, that's one of the rules about vector spaces, that it's closed on the scalar multiplication. And so each one of these things is itself a vector. Then you add them all together, so you add this vector to this vector, of course the result is a vector, that's one of the rules of a vector space, it's closed under vector addition. And you take those two things and you add it together and you add on a third vector, a3, v3, and you carry on adding on vectors, and each time you add on a, add on a vector, alpha i, v i, the result is still in the vector space, it's still a vector. Okay, so a linear combination of vectors then is another vector like that is alpha 1 v1 plus alpha 2 v2 plus da, 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 plus alpha n vn. Um, an th important thing to note about this, I think, is that it's a finite amount of vectors, right? It's just up to a n vn. I mean, it's not like an infinite sum. This n here, this n over here, is not an infinity sign. If you want to deal with infinite sums of things, then you do analysis. We're doing linear algebra, and algebra is usually about finite operations, finite sums of things. Okay. Well, now we have an example. Give all the possible linear combinations of the vector 3, 1, 3. Now, this is a bit of an odd example. Oh, sorry. Give all the, this is a bit of an odd example, as it says, because it's just a set of all scalar multiples of that vector. So here we have, you said, it said let v1, v2 to vn be vectors, belong to the vector space. Now, in this case, our v1 is the vector 3, 1, 3. There's no v2, there's no v3, blah, blah, blah. So the, the sum just becomes alpha 1 times v1, and that's it, because there's nothing else to add. So we have the alpha. Alpha can be anything. Mm. This is a good point. Write down a linear combination of this vector. Well, such a, what example of such a linear combination would be 3 times 3, 1, 3, right? That's a linear combination. Uh, so 9, 3, 9 is the actual vector. Another example of linear combination would be a minus 2 times 3, 1, 3. That's minus 6, minus 2, minus 6. These are two different linear combinations of the same vector. The same, the same set of vectors is set with just one element in it. But if we want all the linear combinations, then we need to say, well, now we're going to replace that 3 or the minus 2 with alpha, and we're going to say that alpha can be anything, can be any real number. Okay, so now this... Now this could be any of linear combinations. And we want the set of all such things. So we say the set of all those things, of all those linear combinations. That's what this S is. It's a set of all these things. So of course, it's an infinitely big set, right? Because it's got a vector in it for every real number. Every single real number has got a vector. So it's a huge set. It's infinitely big. It's got 939. It's got minus 6, minus 2, minus 6. It's got 3 million, 1 million, 3 million, it's got 3 pi, pi, 3 pi, all sorts of things, right? And they, they say that it gives you a straight line, right? Of course it does, because if we think about what that looks like, it's like we have, we have, here's R3, okay? Here's how we normally draw R3. This with, uh, you know, x-axis, y-axis, z-axis. Then 3, 1, 3, that would be a vector that points 3 in the x direction, 1 in the y direction, and then 3 in the z direction. So, you know, it would be a vector maybe that points up here like that. It's a bit hard to see, but it's like three-dimensional, it's coming out of the plane a bit. Now, if you want to multiply that by a scalar, 
you will always get something that points in the same direction, right? So along that line. Or points in the opposite direction if you multiply by a negative scalar. So you get this straight line through the origin. So we have a first example. Yeah. So the set of linear combinations is a straight line through the origin in this case. And it can sometimes help to think about things geometrically like that. OK. The next example. Give all the possible linear combinations of the vectors 1, 0, and minus 2, 1, which have both vectors in R2. So here we go. The set of all the possible linear combinations is all those things of the form alpha times the first vector plus beta times the second vector, where alpha and beta could be any real numbers. And it's the set of all such things. OK. Now, there's, there's a little picture drawn here of the situation. So this is the vector 1, 0, and this is the vector m minus 2, 1, right? Now, it says, after some thought and perhaps consulting the figure 1.2, we might realize that any vector in R2 can be written as a linear combination of those two vectors. In other words, this set of linear combinations, S, is actually equal to R2. It's the whole of R2. We will revisit this idea later in the course. So we're going to talk about this much more later. But what does the set here, for this first example, the set of linear combinations was a straight line. In this example, the set of linear combinations is the whole plane, right? You can get to anywhere in the plane by taking linear combinations of those vectors. So for example, if I wanted to go over here, right, how would I do that? Well, I could go, I'm going to need to, I, let me, it's, sorry, it's hard to talk and draw at the same time. So if, suppose I wanted to go there. How can I get, or go there, I mean, I want to, I want to express, I want to express this vector as a linear combination of, of the vector 1, 0, and the vector minus 2, 1, right? Well, geometrically, you can see that what I could do is have something like that, like that, and something like that. I could go in this direction. I could go in this direction, and then in this direction. Oops, sorry. And then in this direction. OK. But this first direction, that is just the same direction as 1, 0. It's a multiple of 1, 0. It's, I don't know, but maybe it's 4 times 1, 0. OK? So maybe this, that was 1, 0. Maybe that is 4 times 1, 0. And then going like this, coming back, coming, coming back like that, that maybe, looks maybe it's about 2 times the other one, minus 2, minus 1, right? So that means that I'm saying that this vector could be expressed as 4 times 1, 0 plus 2 times minus 2, 1, right? And you can choose any point in the plane and similarly write that, choose any point in the plane, I choose any vector that comes from the origin and express that vector as a linear combination of these two vectors, right? And that's going to be the case for lots of different sets of two vectors. Not all sets of two vectors, but many sets. But we're going to talk about that more later, like it says. How much longer is there in this section? Yeah, I think I can carry on. OK. Now there's another question. Now this question is about a function. Well, not question, example. This example is about a function space, right? Give all the possible linear combinations of the vectors 2x squared, pi, minus 3x, which are all vectors in R to R. So they're all functions from R to R which, as we saw earlier, is itself a vector space. Even though the vectors here are functions, it's a vector space because it's closed under addition and closed under scalar multiplication. OK. So, well, of course, just abstractly, you can just straight away write down the set of all the linear combinations is some scalar times the first function, f of x, some scalar times the second function, g of x, some scalar times the third function h of x, and those scalars, alpha, beta, and gamma, they can be any real numbers. That's the set of all possible linear combinations of f, g, h. Now, of course, that will be like 2 alpha x squared plus, um, what? Oh, sorry. Pi times beta just that, pi times beta, plus ooh, minus 3 times gamma times x, right? OK, 
So it, it, it's a linear combination is some function which I'll call I'll call it k of x, where when you put x in, the x you get the value you get out is two alpha x squared plus pi beta minus three gamma x. Right? Of course, that depends on what x is. But it, now it says here, after some thought, we may realize that this can be simplified. Just like in this case, we simplified this and said that's actually equal to R2. Here we can say, here we, here we say, well, the resulting set S in this case is a set of all polynomials of degree 2 or less, i.e. everything of this form. Okay, why? Because you have this K of X, you have, you have, you have an X squared term, some constant scalar times X squared. But that alpha could be anything, right? So by choosing alpha to be a over two, you get you can get any a, x squared. Then we have an x we have an x term here, right? The gamma can be anything. So it could so, you know, if you want to get b x, you can just let that gamma be um, minus b over three. And then if you want to get this c, this constant term with no x's in it, then you just let the the beta be c over pi, right? So this set S is, there's no reason to keep the complicated issue, the, the pi's and the, the two and the three in there. Just write it as ax squared plus bx plus c, right? And that gives you every quadratic, right? Every polynomial of degree two or less. And they say two or less, right? Because that a, that could, that a, that could be zero. So for example, something like x plus one, that is indeed in that set, right? It's got a equals zero, b equals 1, c equals 1. Similarly, 3 is also in that set. By 3 now, I don't mean the number 3, I mean the function that is constantly 3. That function is in that set as well. You, you set a to be 0, b to be 0, and c to be 3. Okay? Now, you can't really draw this in the same way that we've drawn these things in uh, R3 and R2. The set of all functions is not really a thing you can draw. The set of all polynomials is not really a thing you can draw. But nevertheless, we have this set of all polynomials degree two or less, and that's what S is, and it's certainly a sub, a subset of the functions from reals to reals because a polynomial is an example of a function from reals to reals. Okay. Uh, next example. So the next example is about that funny finite vector space talked about earlier, and I'm not going to bother dealing with that because it's not so relevant to this course, but it's interesting. Look at it if you want. Now the next bit says, linear combinations of vectors are important in understanding. Hmm. Linear combinations of vectors are important in understanding systems of linear equations. Ax equals b, so that's meant to be a system of linear equations. Um, and then that's what we're going to do next.